Hello everyone and welcome to a special Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I'm Head of Product Development Will Schick and I'm excited to be here with you on what is the United States' holiday week. We are prepping up for our Thanksgiving celebration where we take two days off and we do a whole lot of online shopping this year I think. Um, however, if you missed it on Friday, uh, Josh did an amazing thing for everyone where he posted up a fantastic video that previews uh, some of the exciting releases that are coming out next year in quarter two. Uh, I'm speaking, of course, of the Merc with a Mouth Deadpool, along with several other members of the X-Force, Cable, Domino, and a whole bunch of new uh, mutant characters that are going to be uh, opposing our brave X-Men uh, and our new X-Force characters. So with that said, um, just to celebrate the holiday, and because it seems so seasonal and appropriate, I'm going to be painting a Hydra Bob, or more specifically, Bob, Agent of Hydra, uh, one of Deadpool's long-standing allies, I guess. Um, he certainly helps out Deadpool a lot, sometimes under protest. Uh, definitely has a whole great way to make sure that he stays alive. Um, he's been cameoed in one of the films as well. Uh, just a fun character and something that we knew we had to do when we were doing Deadpool. Um, we wanted to kind of bring that flavor, bring that Deadpool mentality to the game. Uh, and I'm not going to spoil anything rules-wise. I can tell you that Bob is probably the craziest and most silly character that we've ever made. Um, and it all starts with his giant uh, flavor launcher, as we called it, his Moy Caliente rocket launcher, um, which we're going to get to painting on right now. So I'm going to hop off this cam. Uh, again, I hope everybody's doing great out there. And we're going to move over, and we're going to get started on painting Senor Bob. All right. So you can see... Uh, there are two options for Bob when it comes to his headgear. Um, you can go with the classic French uh, chef hat. It has a name. I don't actually know what that name is. I bet somebody in chat probably knows the official title for that floppy chef hat. Um, or you can go with a very standard, you know, classic Hydra agent, um, Hydra trooper kind of like skull cap hat uh, without the hat. But because it's Thanksgiving, uh, one of the ways that I was able to get Josh to sign off on putting some paint on this here fella uh, was to hit him with the chef's hat. So we're gonna have some fun. We're gonna get ready to go uh, and have some fun. One of the things I do want to point out that's really fun before we get going is if you notice, um, our Bob is standing on a box of hot sauce. That's right. So in case you're wondering what's in the box, it is clearly hot sauce that he uses for the taco truck. And he also uses it to uh, add that extra bit of spice to that gigantic rocket launcher. Um, I'm gonna be doing a pretty traditional hydro color scheme for Bob. We're just gonna go kind of normal. I uh, thought about maybe doing some more browns or oranges, but I think um, doing this green is going to be the way. So, McMoosh asking about hashtag painting protocol. So, we've actually run into um, a couple of challenges with getting those pics out, one of which is that you can't currently search hashtags on Instagram um, due to kind of the things going on in the United States uh, with the election and stuff. So. We hope to have those out as soon as we can review all of the awesome stuff that's going on. Um, but in order to do that, we need to be able to search the hashtag. And last we checked, you still couldn't. Maybe that's changed. I haven't actually checked this week. We checked on Friday. Um, but I'm excited to get those picks done with the staff and uh, see what everybody did for their October challenge. And then we'll probably be doing uh, a twofer the next time we're on because by the time we get back to access with those hashtags, um, this month's challenge blue and gold is going to be up as well so we will get all of those things picked out i do apologize for the wait we kind of got blindsided by that sudden disappearance of our hashtag um but apparently we're not alone we're in good company with all the other hashtags on instagram so we'll get that figured out and we'll get those things out so to get things started with our bob we're just going to go again with a very traditional kind of hydra hydra suit color scheme so i'm going to be using this uh Irati Green from Scale 75, which is a really nice lush green. I'm going to mix in a little bit of Boreal Green just to tone it back down because um, it's a little bright, but we'll be using that Irati Green for highlights and stuff. I'm going to turn that into a wash like we do with the Zenith Prime, which you can see is on the bob. And we're just going to quickly like bang through um, the green outfit. We're going to use our wash and our Zenith to work together to give us some really good results right away. Bob isn't constantly for everything. He just loves flavor, and you need a big rocket launcher to give a lot of flavor. It's got all the spices in it, you know? Deadpool is all about 
the added level of spiciness, and Bob agrees. Oh, see? There you go. Simone, our new head of studio in there, dropping knowledge bombs about chef hats. Now, Mr. Sinister was another one that <clears throat> we knew we wanted to get into the game pretty soon. Um, he made a lot of sense for us to kind of do as one of the follow-up villains, you know, one of the more evil mutant characters. Um, Dallas, who I think is in the chat, had way too much fun figuring out the posing on him and... You know, the idea quickly came about, well, what if we did him with a clone vat? Like, stepping out of a clone vat. Like a little cloning tank, so he's got all the mysterious smoke and stuff. Um, it's definitely an homage a bit to the comic covers and stuff, and the way that he's been treated as well. Where uh, you often can't see their, their feet. Um, so obscuring his leg and his foot was definitely something that we thought was a fun kind of additional nod to that and doing it in the cool cloning vat smoke was um, just too cool to pass up. You know, one of the things that we've talked about a little bit, but it's something we continue to push, is not just the exciting dynamism of the sculpts themselves, but also the stories that they tell. Um, you know, these, these miniatures are definitely, when they're on their shelf, they're, our hope is that, you know, you have them like I do, I have all my my characters that I've painted for MCP um, on the shelf above where I work every day at home in my Londra dungeon hobby room and that's like having just a little shelf of awesome collectibles that I've painted and I play with and all that stuff so we're definitely always looking to how we can push more of that <coughs> forward and get those stylistic designs tell stories with the characters themselves I think that's something that's exciting on the game and off the game as well Two hidden models in the trailer. I don't. I don't know which model. Uh, I don't. We don't have models in the trailer. There's some miniatures in there, but I don't think there's anything hidden. I don't know. Maybe Josh snuck one in when I wasn't paying attention. But I'm pretty sure everything gets its day in the trailer. I don't think there's any secret surprises. But I could be wrong. Josh is off this week. He's taking a well-deserved break. So. I guess we can't ask him. Dallas brought all the Dallas brought all the miniatures to the the shooting studio when we did that, so maybe he knows. Maybe he snuck something in. Who knows? Who knows? All right. Let's see. So we got our green first layer kind of down. We might go back through and do another layer. We can also kind of dull this down as it dries, depending on how bright it is. But I think I'm pretty happy with where this is going right now. So we'll call that good for the moment while that dries out. And move on and we'll start doing our yellows here. So if no Josh cards can be shown, uh, I mean that would be true if I had cards to show you, but this is this is definitely a very special uh, this is a very special episode in terms of its forward lookingness. Um, so I can, I can, I could probably, uh, tease for you the things that we're going to be covering next month when we come back from the break. Josh probably couldn't get too mad at me about that. Do I lick my brush? All the time. Um, it's a great way to reestablish the point. And I like how it horrifies everybody when they see me do it, especially in my household. So I think part of it is just, I like to gross out my wife. Um, but it's a it's a ten, it's a tendency that I've picked up um, in terms of like getting that brush point back. Don't lick a brush that's loaded with paint. Clean it out first, really good. Is there an alternate crate? There's not an alternate crate. There's an alternate head. But if you really don't want it to say hot sauce, because I don't I don't know why, but you just didn't. Um, you could scrape it off with a hobby knife really easy because it's nice and raised. Um, and you wouldn't even notice that the detail is gone because his foot's like right there. The current plan to release all the miniatures at once. Uh, if you're talking about in the video, I assume, the ones that were shown in the trailer, um, 
I can't really say too much. Obviously, that's a lot of content, so um, as we get closer, we'll start announcing release dates and stuff based on when all those things will be coming out. But that, that video definitely covers um, more than more than enough stuff. Oh, man, I like these conspiracy theories, chat, about what happened and when in the timestamps. So, I'm not going to I'm not going to confirm or deny any of that stuff. Anything from a galaxy far, far away. I mean, you can ask whatever you want. Um, and there's a lot of us here, including our head of studio. So I'm not going to stop you, but I also may not be able to answer things based on what you ask. That's, that's my promise to you. That's what we do on all these shows. If you're new um, and you just wanted to see what the heck these Atomic Mass folks get up to on... An MCP painting stream, well, here you go. We kind of walk through um, what we do. We take the opportunity to chat about what's going on, check in on everybody, just have a good time and hang out. And then we answer every question that we possibly can or see. Um, but a lot of those, a lot of questions, you know, you just, we, we, we have, we have limits. So don't hold it against us if we can't answer something that you ask. Are we back in the studio? No, we are not. We're uh, in our glorious state of Washington because we're located in Seattle, in the Seattle area. We're basically back on lockdown. So, uh, unfortunately, like many places in the United States and I think elsewhere in the world, you know, just trying to be safe and and make sure that we're doing our part to keep everybody safe and healthy and all that stuff. So. I'm still in the place that I've been the whole time, which is my laundry room, which is also my office because it's got a door and it works out really well. So, I mean, uh, obviously I can't, as, as the old veteran MCP folks know, one of our favorite phrases um, that we often say in regards to any question concerning future products is that um, we cannot comment on future possible releases. So that also extends to anything that's not MCP related. And there's a lot of reasons for that. Um, we like to make sure that when we talk about stuff, we're 100% on it and we don't want to lead to speculation or anything like that. So we try to be as transparent and open as possible. And a lot of the times that means that we just can't say anything. I know it seems like the antithesis of it, but I'd rather be upfront and honest with y'all than leave you like, you know, guessing or lead you down the wrong conclusions or anything like that or say things that I'm not 100% sure on because um, we want to be as accurate as possible. Um, obviously the announcement was kind of a big deal. It was something that we wanted to make sure and get out before kind of the holiday season. I'll let people know what's going, but um, there's a lot of work to be done. We're very excited to dive into it. Um, and uh, it's going to mean great things for all the games, honestly. Like, I think Simone said it best when she said, you know, we're getting the specialization and for those of you who have hung around with us, you know our passion for miniatures and the folks who are joining us um, on this big journey are also super passionate and very talented when it comes to the miniature hobby and these games. And so we're excited to combine towers and, you know, like five mystical lions forming one giant super bot.
<laughs> yeah, I, just because one game has something and one and another game has a different way of doing things, um, you know, doesn't doesn't mean that anything's going to transfer over to any. Uh, I can I can absolutely confirm your MCP miniatures are going to stay just as they are. We're going to continue to work on you know constantly improving the quality the dynamic poses all the things that make them very exciting and fun but um, they're hobby miniatures and they're going to stay that way so if you suddenly thought somebody was going to change for mcp nope 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 not at all i built this little hydra bob this morning Has AMG grown? We, um, we are, yeah, we've grown, actually. Um, obviously, as the announcements have said and stuff, um, a lot of the key team from, we've been sharing our trade seat together with another hobbyist, and you start talking about, well, how do you paint this color, and how do you do that? And everybody kind of develops their own techniques and ways of doing things, and then you take other people's ideas. A lot of different, not, not paint by numbers, so that you can go and take these different techniques and apply them in ways that make sense for you so that you can get the kind of product that you want. So, um, yeah, as, as head of product development, for those asking in chat, um, working on those new Star Wars games and stuff um, with the team, that was already doing great work on them from FFG, absolutely something that is a new focus and part of the reason for our restructuring um, is it was really, it was a very exciting opportunity to me to continue to do the part that I'm really passionate about and love, which is creating awesome miniatures and super cool games around those miniatures and getting to work closely with Dallas and his team on all that stuff. Um, which I now get to focus on more. And I'm learning. Uh, I'm learning so much from my conversations with the people who've been stewards of these games and everything. Um, and we're kind of like, yeah, it's just been really cool. It's been a cool short amount of time, and I'm looking forward to really diving in after the holidays. But you know, the goal is that again, much like we talk about here, right? Everybody has techniques. Everybody has ways of approaching stuff. Um, cool thing about creativeness is all those things are valid in their own ways and it's combining those into something that's uniquely AMG and continues to meet you know the vision we had for the studio and what we've been working to accomplish the MCP and taking a similar vision from the team that's been working on the other properties combining those together because we share a whole lot of the same principles and ideas and coming out a bigger, better, more exciting studio that's, you know, hopefully going to dominate and um, provide everybody the fun experiences and exciting games and miniatures and hobbies that they want. Yeah, it's pretty clever how a lot of those, you know, you start really diving into, like, comics and drawings, and you see just how much, you know, drawing every panel is so challenging. It's the same with animation and stuff. Those old hand-drawn animations, they reuse frames and stills and all of that. Um, you have the same kind of thing. Although the inverse costuming makes a lot of sense from a, uh, you know, villain hero kind of thing, but... Bob could be painted up to be a shield agent, I suppose, pretty easily because he's got the same holster straps and all of that stuff going on. All right, so we've got kind of our basic layers down. It's looking pretty fun, pretty good.
All right, so I think our green is dry. I'm gonna go in and just add a little bit of some green ink to my initial color. I just wanna make like a little bit of a shade, a little shade wash, which I'll get into the cracks and crevices. Just to kinda of tone it down. Mix that up really quick. Uh, so I'm just using Intense Green Ink. And I'm just mixing that in with my base color to just darken everything down. And if I decide that's not quite enough, I might add in like a little bit of blue or maybe even a little bit of black. just to get that nice depth going on. Bob's looking pretty good, but he's pretty lime greeny here, so. Just gonna come in. I'm just gonna go over this really quick. And this is definitely like a traditional wash, so I just thinned it out really nice so it'll flow into the cracks and the crevices. Even though it's higher, it's kind of untouched. And I just wanna be careful that it doesn't pool too much. Do one more kind of shade wash after this dries. Just to deepen that color even further because I really like where we are on the highlights, but I'm gonna make sure that we have that nice volume from the, the shades and stuff. This Hydra Bob was sculpted by one Gail Gouman, um, who is also did uh, several of our other characters. He's really great at getting human anatomy like just spot on. So fantastic option for more human focused Bob here, getting that that weediness right, you know, because he's not super powered. He's just a dude who needed a good health plan and uh, chose poorly, as it turns out. It was not. It was not the right move. You should have gone to Aim. Aim had better dental. Hydra, no, no dental. But he picked Hydra and got stuck in. And then he met. Then he met his friend Deadpool. And uh, you know, went from being Hydra to hero. Yeah, yeah. Scarlet Witch. Um, for those who have watched the video and seen kind of where where we took Scarlet Witch, that was definitely. Um, that was a unique and fun challenge. Like a whole bunch of the characters from that video were just so fun to work on. Uh, watching Marco kind of take the telekinetic shield idea that I pitched for Cable and really wanted to see on him and, uh, and make it a reality, um, along with just capturing Cable's like over the top, you know, comic feel and look was so cool. Das did actually paint the Scarlet Witch as well. So that is a Das Kemp studio paint job. So we had a lot of fun with this wave. There were a lot of there were a lot of interesting challenges, you know. Um, a lot more explosions. This is a very explosive wave, which was also fun a fun space to play in. You know, X-Force is very action-centric, so we wanted to make sure that we kind of laid that out with rockets and telekinetic shields with bullets impacting off of them and Domino riding her explosive wave. Um, it was just... It was just fun. There was a lot of fun had in the studio coming up with this stuff and like thinking about it. I think that's, at the end of the day, we always talk about 
our core philosophy and our stance on everything we do and it always comes back to fun you know if it's not fun doing it if you're not having fun then what's the point that's why we hobby is for relaxation for enjoyment to see our skills improve and just to not take ourselves too seriously once in a while that's how you wind up with Deadpool with two different bodies and four heads one of which is probably the most ridiculous head I've ever seen for a miniature which is hard eyes Deadpool I was uh, uh, I went I went on family vacation to go visit relatives over the summer I came back and they were like I was like I need to talk to you like Marco and I have something to discuss and I was like okay and they're like we did something and I was like, what did you do? And they're, <laughs> and they're like, don't get mad until you see it. There were, I think, 12 different heads for Deadpool. All different styles and, like, just craziness. They're like, he just, he needs a lot of options. What do you want to give him? And I was like, my goodness, boys. Um, but it was great. So we really, you know, Deadpool has been, it's one of those characters that has so many different interpretations like a lot of the like a lot of marvel characters you know he's got a long history he's almost 30 years old now i believe if my time is right um and you know he, he wasn't always like the goofy clown character even in even in similar runs you know one of the things that there was a hot shots episode that i really liked where you know it's all told from domino's perspective but they're talking about cable and or don excuse me, but I was talking about um, Deadpool, and she's like, you know, a lot of people just think that he's this silly clown character, and she's like, but I've seen the real Wade, and he is legitimately dangerous. Like, he's he's not a joke. It's just the joke persona is kind of his initial, somewhat like Spider-Man in a way, kind of his initial protection, but when that falls away and he gets serious, it gets really like, you better get, you better get out of the way, or you're going to get knocked over. And we really wanted to be able to bring that that wide variance of the character to people and let them pick the Deadpool that they wanted. Or pick all the Deadpools, you know, whatever you want to do. But making sure that we, because Deadpool means something to people based on when they discovered him, kind of their own take on personality. And I think that's one of the brilliances about all Marvel characters is their character in general, but... Deadpool, I think, has spoken to so many people because of his wide range of what he means and what he can mean and how people view that character, you know? Um, so it was, it was great after I got over my shock of all the different changes. I was like, okay, this is going to be really good. And So you've got, you know, more action, serious Deadpool. You've got goofy Deadpool. You got Hard Eyes Deadpool, Scowly Deadpool, Happy Deadpool, Smirky Deadpool. It's all there. <laughs> all right. Yeah, and I think somebody asked about cable, but um, cable's cape is optional. So you can have cable with the cape, some more of the modern take, or you want to go like real classic you can get rid of the cape and just have cable um in his suit with his tk thing i always like capes on miniatures especially because they just add so much drama um and and kinetic action but you know if you want no cape cable you can totally do that it was you know, about kind of dialing in those different character options and like we've talked about before we like making choices I'm going to use some black metal, and I'm going to just going to base coat the uh, gun. Well, we let that green dry, and then we'll come back to the yellow. We're on time. We're doing pretty good on time. Um, so wherever we can put in options that make sense and add, you know, extra value and personalization of those characters, we really want to do that. Bonus pouches. I mean, how could you do cable and not have bonus pouches so there are there are some bonus pouches just in case 
he doesn't have enough pouches already. Bob is our first threat one. I mean, you gotta wait. You're just gonna have to wait and see. I don't know, that rocket launcher is pretty big. Seven threat seems more accurate to me. Bob's a dangerous man. He was trained by Hydra for crying out loud. That's like a minimum of eight threat right there. Rocket is threat two, actually. And just because I'm gonna do the gun handle in this black steel and then we'll dull it down with some black ink. I like doing most of my gun metal guns, even though they're not actually super shiny, because most of them are carbon composites and stuff now. But I like to do them in that darker steel and then just wash them really heavy with black ink and dull them down nice, because it gives them that slight sheen that you see from gun metal. All right, so I'm gonna move over and we're gonna do the Deadpool hat. So I'm gonna use Arctic Blue for this because I like it. It's a really great kind of foundational um, blue-white that covers really nicely over that Vallejo gray primer. And that blue will tie in nicely as an undertone to our green. And of course, as we talk about with white all the time, Actually painting things white uses very little true white. It's all about the shadows because what your eye sees when it comes to white is the shadow, not the highlight necessarily. Just like when you're painting black, it's all about the highlight and not necessarily the shadow because the shadow is where black actually is. So you can make a lot of really good progress on some of these trickier colors by kind of following that philosophy and Dallas is become an expert at painting white in my opinion. I've learned a lot from just hanging out and talking to him and watching. Um, but if you take that approach, it will serve you pretty well as far as getting nicer whites and you won't have to do 5,000 layers of pure white and say, why does it look wrong? Because it's all about those shadows when it comes to white. So there's that. We'll move on and I'm just going to hit his face. Let's do what we normally do and try to get him to a tabletop standard before the hour is over, which is one of my favorite things to do on these. And then, of course, if we have extra time or things like that, we can always go back in later streams and kind of touch him up and take him to that next level. Um, but I really like the transmissions because it's just kind of a good showcase to be like hey you don't have to you don't have to go crazy to make something really cool the tabletop we can just do some really simple stuff and get to a point where we're very happy with and call it good so I'll do that box I'm gonna grab just some light brown kind of turn it into a wash here really quick we'll just start going over that hot sauce box 
And then we can come back through again and hit it with some brown ink and some reds maybe and just deepen that up. Give it a nice little crate-like appearance. I, I don't I don't typically beat my brush against the table leg Bob Ross style. Um, I could I suppose I I need like a different brush though. I feel like that would send the wrong message. You shouldn't beat your you shouldn't beat your hobby brushes <laughs> against the table leg. <laughs> you can do that with your big old oil paint brushes. We don't we don't beat the devil out of things here. We kind of just leave them alone. This is our first layer of that brown. And of course, as that dries, we can come back in and hit it with another like darker brown layer. Uh, and then we can also hit that hot sauce label. So I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go back through and we're gonna hit up that yellow one more time. So for the yellow, I'm using uh, Sahara Desert, right? Yeah, that's what it's called. Um, some scale, and then I'm just going to mix in some little, th some little with yellow to like brighten it up. Oh, it doesn't want to focus, but it's a little with yellow. You can trust me on that. Um, I like these two colors kind of mixed together. The the sands is definitely an ochre, and this is much like painting white. I'm trying to paint like a bright primary yellow. Um, that way madness lies. So it's always best to start with like a yellow ochre, which is a yellow brown using fancy art names. I don't know. I'm assuming ochre is where the pigment came from, but I don't know. It's an ochre. And then you can mix in either a primary yellow or a lighter yellow, and it really helps make that yellow go super good. When I add ink into my paint, it's time out. Um, Wampus Knob, it depends on when I'm adding ink to my paint. It depends on what I'm trying to do with it. So if I'm like trying to just make a wash, then it kind of is, um, you know, two, three drops maybe, and then I thin it out with other water. Um, if I'm just using it to thin the paint, then it just comes down to whatever feels right. But usually one drop of ink, depending on the amount of paint in your well, is plenty. Um, you can also be going for vibrancy, so the more ink you add, the more vibrant and saturated that color is going to get. So if you want to get like a really vibrant yellow or a really vibrant red, um, you can add you can add more drops of ink, and that will obviously like really punch up the color. So there's a lot of different answers to that question based on kind of what you're going for. Um, but I always ascribe to the it feels right. You know, I do a little painting on your thumb. Um, or do a little bit on the base, do something where you can test it to make sure that it feels good. Um, and then of course a little is better than a lot because you can always add more but it's really hard to go back. So, um, but it is really, it is really highly dependent on the goal of why I'm adding ink to my paint and I don't do it all the time. Um, Works really well for thinning for thinning colors like yellow or red, things that kind of lose their opacity as you um, thin them with water or like medium, because it again it will help that color punch up, and it'll work uh, it'll work really nice to let the paint loosen up so that it spreads really nice and can be blended out like I'm doing here with my other brush. Um, just to kind of like speed through these highlights and make them a little cleaner. So, oh yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if I'd say it's like cooking with salt because add the salt a little at a time, but if you ask me as somebody who likes to cook a lot and has done um, a fair amount of cooking research and watching the the biggest problem people have with their foods is they don't use enough salt um, the fear of over salting your food is something that stops it from being as delicious as it should be uh, if you ever watch me cook you'll see 
you know, I've taken a lot of lessons from Masterclass Chef folks on YouTube and other things where it's just like salt the hell out of it. Butter, salt, citric, like acids, all that stuff. But yeah, you definitely, you definitely want to be careful. Um, and go slow until you find that kind of mix that you like. And then once you're there, kind of stick with it. But it'll be different every time. And some of it depends on the humidity in the air, especially when you're thinning out paints. Um, temperature's really cold right now, so my paints are running a lot thicker. So I'm doing a lot more thinning than I normally would. Um, because, you know, they're starting to kind of solidify in that cold. The, the mixtures are tightening up. So there's a whole lot of... It's a whole lot of considerations, uh, and that's why it's always best to go by feel and what you're looking for and all that stuff. Uh, I would say at least a quarter cup of salt in your paint, especially if you're planning on licking your brush with the paint still on it. It'll, it'll make it more palatable. It's like when, when mashups go wrong, You can kind of see how that yellow is coming through. If we wanted to take it a little higher, um, we could add a little white in it and just get that extra zing of color. But I think for tabletop, I'm not really going to worry about that too much. When I make a little mistake on that, I can come back in through with my, my brush. Definitely want to get that thumb though. Get that zing on that thumb so you can see it. He's very happy. I think one of the things that, uh, oh, one of the things that I can spoil that's really exciting, I don't think Dallas has said yet, but part of what comes in uh, the Deadpool and Bob Agent of Hyder box that wasn't on the video is a little tray of tacos. So there's a whole like little tray of tacos and a drink cup and stuff that you can you can use to make sure that you're MCP characters have tasty treats during their game. I'm excited to take that tray and mod it so that Bob is holding it with his little chef's hat. I think that's going to be great. But they have the tiniest of tacos, and they still look delicious. Because as we all know, tacos are amazing. I mean, if you don't count throwing an entire taco truck at somebody else a food fight, then I don't know what you're doing with your life. I'm really afraid to know what you think a food fight would be. So yeah, a couple taco trucks, throw those, throw a daily grind stand. That sounds like a super hard food fight to me. All right, let's grab some gold really quick. And so this is just not that one. This is Dwarven Gold from Scale. I'm just gonna do the buckles really quick. Just keep going until we run out of time here. We actually, uh, when it came down to what went in the box with Deadpool, we knew the taco truck was going in before we even knew Bob was going in. There was no question. We couldn't, we couldn't do a Deadpool and not have a taco truck with him, just based on the character and all things. Like, it was just too fun. And plus, I mean, where else do you find taco trucks in tabletop wargaming? There's not enough of them, to be honest. So if we can add a little bit of a delicious taco flavoring to tables everywhere, like, let's do it. One of the things I always really appreciate about good world building and stuff is like, you can always tell somebody's thought about culture and the normal life of people when you see 
when you see that they've included food stands like places for people to eat in a in a common area or a district or things like that um, they're so you know you don't you don't necessarily notice it's kind of like a belly button you don't notice it right away but you realize your brain just realizes something's wrong when you're in a bustling area and there's no place to eat because that's just you know humans are driven by this need to feed themselves because it's like important for life or whatever so so much of our culture and our livelihood revolves around food you get a bunch of people together in a public space there's there's going to be a food truck there so i just mix a little bit of pure white with my arctic blue and i'm just going to go back through and do some quick highlighting on the chef's hat I'm just using my secondary brush to kind of blend out this color. I'm just looking for those places, those highlights. So this is kind of like a layer highlight. So I'm just sending where those areas are raised. I'm going to use that secondary blending brush to keep the blend smooth and sometimes your white paint depending on its type and how cold it is and all that stuff can get really chalky kind of chunky so you can also use that blending brush to kind of smooth that out because you keep it a little damp and then you can just pull it as you need to back in I'm just going to use a little bit more pure white I'm going to hit those really top highlights This is kind of more just like a zing to the colors. Just kind of going around the edge of the thing and everything. There we go. So that's our nice little chef hat. And all right, so we've got our yellow, we got our gold. We're gonna use a little bit of black. We'll hit the inside of that rocket launcher. Do a quick wash of black, wash just to tone down the rocket launcher. So I'm just gonna be kind of sloppy with this, and I'll use my thumb and wipe it away so we have that nice dark barrel before the spice gets blast it out uh, we'll grab some black wash really quick so I'm just gonna grab black I'm actually gonna grab uh, there's a Vallejo black wash so I'm just gonna use Vallejo black wash because it's already made up and it will be great and we're just gonna wash that over the entirety of rocket launcher just to give it some quick shading because again we're going for that tabletop kind of quick and dirty standard it still looks great from three feet away that's what we're looking for arm's length away talk about tabletop that's really the goal is um, if you can make it look really good from three feet away that's where most people are going to wind up watching and looking at the miniature they're not going to look at the undersides you know, if they pick it up, they're going to pay a lot of attention to the head and the torso. So that's that's where you spend all your time. That's that's where you're going to get the most return on your investment. It's going to look really good. You're going to look that way too. You know, no one's ever going to really turn your miniature upside down and be like, "Oh, you didn't you didn't quite get under there, did you?" Unless you're going to like a competition like the Worthy or something like that, um, you can be pretty pretty assured, pretty safe. I'm going to use, I'm actually going to use 
what's left of this black ink and I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to just touch and that Hydra logo just kind of make that H pop a bit better Made that really nice and sharp. All right, let's do the hot sauce logo because we got like nine minutes left, and then we'll call this largely a success in terms of what we attempted to accomplish today. So I'm going to grab uh, which color do I want? Mayhem red, yeah. So we're going to grab some mayhem red from Scale. We'll use this as our base, as our base red. And where we go. So with this, I'm less trying to draw out the words as I'm just kind of like lightly tapping the brush and letting the paint do what the paint wants to do, which is to flow onto the surface. So it allows my, like I'm mostly just controlling how my shake is. Ooh, let me come up just a little bit. Because by not pressing down, I don't run the risk of having that paint mash into like the crevices and stuff or I don't want it. Even if I get a little spillover when I do that brown wash, a lot of that red will like get hidden by the heaviness of the wash because it's in the shadows. So, and it's just very much like a light touch. And I'm lighting the paint. This is one of the biggest things when it comes to painting and I think one of the things that benefits um, beginner painters, people are just starting to learn the most is you always think of painting, you think of, you know, the Bob Ross style where you're, you're painting something out of nothing. So you have to draw the tree, you have to draw the mountain. With the miniature, it, it's all there. All we're doing is we're just giving it color and then helping out with some visual trickery to make it pop even more. So that hot sauce logo is there. I'm not freehanding it. It's nice and raised and it's ready to go. It wants to be painted. So all I have to do is just, you know, bring the paint to the section and the paint by its very nature will do the job. It will flow. Uh, same with the H on his logo, right? I could try to paint that with a paint, but I'm going to mess it up if I just take the wash and let the capillary action of the paint run into the crevices and do what it wants to do naturally. I'm going to get these, I'm going to get a better result and it's going to look nice and ready to go. And there you go. You can see hot sauce. So, and that was just from, you know, touching, touching the paint to the canvas and letting the raised letters like really pick up that and look nice and neat. So we're looking pretty good. This Bob is pretty happy. Um, I'm going to do a quick flesh wash because I have some time here. And then we'll do a quick uh, brown wash. Maybe we'll do a couple of little dot highlights on the hot sauce logo. And I think we'll call this a success for one hour in tabletop standard. And then perhaps when we come back to our friend Senior Bob here uh, later next year, we'll just go through and bring him back to a higher do a couple more things just to take them to a higher level. So this is just a uh, pre-mixed Vallejo flesh wash that I'm just applying into the crevices, letting it run really nice, just get that nice detailing. And then where it pools a little too heavily, I just come back with my clean brush, and let it kind of like soak up that. 
more under that lip. There we go. So there, Bob. Pick out our brown ink that we want to use. So I'm going to use actually chestnut from scale. And I just want kind of like a warm. So I'm just going to add some water to that. A little bit of glaze medium maybe. And it down. We'll just come in. I don't want that to get into the cracks and stuff. And we could play with some black inks too if we wanted to. But oops. Get that on camera so you can see what's going on. So chestnut has a nice like red warmth to it, which seems you know good for hot sauce. This is kind of just mopping it on. If you ever mop slather on ribs or anything, it's kind of the same technique here. You just kind of like smoosh it on, let it run into those crevices and stuff. There's that. And there we go. So like next steps on this bob, like what I would do next if I wanted to take him to that next level. A couple of really simple things. Number one would just be dark lining. So go through, run some um, dark ink, either blue or black or a mixture like around the eyes. Obviously you get some dark lining around the belts and stuff to give it nice separation from that green. Um, and then around the boots, clean up some of the trim around the boots where it's a little messy. But overall, um, I would be more than happy to finish the base in this and get him on a play table and start playing with my Hydra Bob. Um, but Josh won't let me, so he'll go on the shelf. We'll finish him up later. We'll take him to that next level. But there you go. I hope that you all had a lot of fun hanging out uh, painting a Hydra Bob. I hope his chef hat has inspired you if you're in the States for your own super awesome, safe and healthy Thanksgiving feast. We're going to cook up a storm where I am as well. Um, and everything else. Uh, of course, we won't be streaming on Thursday as we'll be on vacation taking a break. Um, here, both Dallas, myself, and all of the AMG studio will be enjoying a nice earned Thanksgiving, uh, staying safe and healthy and happy. So we will be back the following week. Uh, so you'll see me back on Tuesday. Uh, I'll give you a little preview of what is next. I will be doing some work on this lady right here. Um, so I did a little pre-prep work just to, just to get her ready. Um, but join us next Tuesday as we dive in and we're gonna be painting Angela, Aldous Odin's daughter. Uh, on stream and getting ready for the next releases. We also have a bunch of surprises um, planned for you in December um, that we've talked about. There will be no new releases, so we're just kind of cranking into 2021, uh, which is very exciting, but we do have a couple of things coming your way that I think will be pretty fun. Kicking off with that Deadpool video, if you haven't watched it yet, go do it. Otherwise, um, stay safe, stay healthy. Uh, we appreciate y'all, and we're looking forward to hanging out with you in the coming month. So, Bye, y'all.